Okay, now let's see the steps when you want to write a literature review. Briefly, it can be divided into four parts. The first part is problem formulation. And then you need to search literatures. And the third part is select the significant literature and classification. The last part is discussion and summarizing. So here are some tips on problem formulation. Actually, it's important that how to formulate your problem. You should select a topic you are interested in. You want to be facilitated throughout the process and less likely to lose motivation. It will help you a lot if your topic for review is the one that which you intend to do your final project or is in some way related to the topic of your final project. And also sometimes it will be determined by your supervisor. And then you can choose a topic with a feasible focus. So keep the focus clear and defined and it will be easier to complete than something huge like headaches. And get help. Get it early and often. Solicit opinions before you begin. Solicit opinions before you begin. Review drafts when start them. You may want to start out with a journal idea. Review the literature of that area and then refine your problem based on what you have found. The second step is literature search. Here I list several databases I have mentioned last class. So for English databases, the often used is Web of Science. So it contains the ICI, SICI, CPCI, and the Derwent Innovation Index, also journal citation reports. You could find journals with high impact factors that in your own disciplines. For Chinese databases, we have CNKI, CSCD, CSICI. This is the Web of Science interface. We have started the academic databases last section, and you should be familiar right with the Web of Science interface. And for Chinese publications, the commonly used one is CNKI. Here is the website. It also has the English version. You can select. The database contains the following data. You could see that's the China Academic Journals Full Text Database, China Proceedings of Conference Full Text Database, also International Proceedings of Conference, and China Yearbooks Full Text Database, and also the Doctoral Dissertation Full Text Database, Master Thesis Full Text Database. And the search function in CNKI could be here, you could use, could be used to find relevant papers in these databases. Here is the tips on literature search. We usually use the keyword search. You can use in a set of keywords. And we also, also use topic search. That means you search the keywords in title, keywords, and plus abstract. And we also use representative journal search. That means journals with high impact factors in your own domain, and also relevant international conference search. And in the end, we merge all the searching results. Here I give you an example about how you formulate your search query. For example, if we want to search papers about nanoscience or nanotechnology, we 
usually use the topic search. Topic search. That means we search in title, keywords, and object. And we want to search some keywords that start with N A N O. So we use the wildcard character, a star, to represent any characters. So that means any keywords that start with N A N O will will be okay, and we will search that papers. And also we will filter out. Any that keywords that we don't want to search, so we will fill out that these publications. And here is、um, we also want to search relevant international conferences here, and in the end merge all the results together. And the third step is selecting literature and classification. So select. What kind of literature you should read first? So that means we should select the significant literature first, and we should first of all read widely. Right? When you read for a review, you are actually doing two things at the same time. First thing, trying to define your research problem, finding a gap, asking a question. Continue previous research, and then you're trying to read our results relevant to your research problem. So usually it's impossible to do the later. There are so many papers. You will need to identify the most relevant and significant works and focus on them. That means we should focus on two kinds of papers. Classic. That means we need to focus on two kinds of papers. Classic, that's the most influential, highly cited. Usually, it's defined by number of citations, right? And then the second kind is representative papers that represent the research fronts. So, how to identify representative papers? We will use several quantitative methods. We could use several quantitative methods to identify them. I will mention later. So before you define your problem, hundreds of sources will seem relevant. However, you cannot define a problem until you read around your research area. This seems、um, a terrible circle, right? But when, what you should happen is that. As you read, you define a problem, and as you define a problem, you will more easily be able to decide what to read and what to ignore. So here are two suggestions. Firstly, read the latest highly cited review papers, so you can get、uh, over all understanding of the field. And secondly, selection and classification. There are three kinds: selection, rough selection by reading the title and object, and accurate selection, skimming the object, introduction and conclusion, and then classification. Put the literary, and then the classification. Put the literature on the same topic in one class. In one class. The last step is discussion summarizing. Discussion is、um, findings and conclusions of pertinent literature, and also you should summarize what has been done, what kinds of issues have, what kind of issues have not been solved, and which issue needs to be further studied. That means I will try to investigate and solve this issue. And here are some tips of questions to consider when you do your own review. For example, what do we already know in the immediate area concerned? What are the characteristics of the key concepts 
or the main factors are variables. What are the relationship between these key concepts? Factors are variables. What are the existing theories? So these are the suggested questions. So you need to consider when you write your own review. And here is the suggested organization of the review. So when you write a review paper, here, the first part will be the introduction. That's the introduction to the literature review. That should include the content. That means what is covered in this review. And then is the structure, how it is organized. You should also specify the boundaries. That means what is inside its scope, what is outside its scope. The second part is the body of the review. You can divide it into several sections. That means you put the most important topic or key concept in the first section if you have several topics. And then discussed and evaluated, summarized and related to your research project. So if you have a second topic, that means you put the next the most important topic or a key concept in section two. Also discussed and evaluate, summarize, and related to your research project. And if you have additional sections, you can follow the same pattern here. And then you should have the conclusion. So for each of the section, summarize, summarize, highlight the most relevant points. Related, relate these back to the need for research. Reiterate what these mean for the research design. And it was an effective literature review. So place each work in the context of is contribution to the understanding of the subject and the review. Describes the relationship of each work to the others and the consideration. Also should identify new ways to interpret and shed light on any gaps in previous research. Resolves conflicts among its seemingly contradictory previous studies. Identifies areas of prior scholarship to prevent duplication of effort. Points the way forward for further research and places one's original work in the case of thesis or dissertations in the context of existing literature.